You are now tuned in live to uh, SBC Bible study. Say that. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Good evening. <laughs> that thing sounded perfect. Hey, we should do a podcast, brother. We should, do a, we should do a Christian podcast. With brother, who in it? All of us. We should like you know. We should talk about. I mean, we kind of. This is kind of like a podcast if you think about it. Brother Holden. All right. I'm sorry. You want to open this up with prayer? Yeah, that's fine. May people. May, may you please by your heads and close your eyes. Precious and Heavenly Father, Father, Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord God, for another time to come together to learn more about you. Please, Lord, let us focus on your word for the next 45 minutes to an hour so that we may get something from this and be able to apply this to our lives. Lord, we thank you for <clears throat> big blessings. Uh, we thank you for rooms that we may not be in, but that our names are in. Uh, we ask that you keep us covered in your precious and holy name. I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, you know, Alex, I talked to you earlier, so I know you're doing fine. It's just that you're towards the end of a long day. Oh, as always. <laughs> David, I'm sure you're doing well. Yeah, man. You know, God is good. All the time. All the time, God is good. <laughs> <laughs> all right um we're gonna go ahead and get started um again we're still walking through acts we're gonna be going through acts chapter 8 verses 1 through 25 um uh, yeah. and um here we go uh so we're gonna so just so you know the version i don't have the version here but this is the international children's version figured oh yeah a little bit more plainer um so um somebody want to start us off by reading uh uh verses one to four i'll read it okay turn up then please anyway saul agreed that the killing of uh stefan was a good thing some religious men buried stefan they cried very loudly for him. On that day, people began trying to hurt the church in Jerusalem and make it suffer. Saul was also trying to destroy the church. He went from house to house. He dragged out men and women and put them in jail. All the believers except the apostles went to different places in Judea and Samaria. And everywhere they were scattered, they told people the good news. Okay. And so... So if you remember when we were looking at um, Act 6 and 7, right, uh, Stephen was stoned and Saul was the guy who was basically watching everybody's coats, and, you know, so that they could go ahead and stone Stephen, right? And so um, we see here the church is, is scattered, right? It's, attack, it's being attacked for doing the only thing, the only thing they did was talk about Jesus Christ, right? Share the good news. And so because of that, um, the church is on the run, okay? And how many times have we been in a situation that our good is evil spoken of, or we do the right things, um, and it seems like every time we do something good, something bad happens. I, I mean, have you ever been in that type of a situation? For sure. Okay. And so that's what's happening here with the, the, the early church. And so, um, and think about it, right? Um, we've been looking at the church from Acts 1 up to, you know, the, the death of, of Stephen. And what type of community that we, we saw there? What was the community of the church? You know? What do you think the atmosphere was amongst the the uh, the, the first church? If you think about it, based on this scripture, not based on this scripture, but think about the the other lessons that we went through, right? Yeah, wow. they were like a community, a family, right? Okay, and so here we have now this family is being attacked and it's actually being scattered, right? So, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, you know, imagine it, you, you and your family are sitting and having dinner and some, 
people come in and they're dragging you out um, and talking about how they're going to put you in jail because you're, you know, because you're a family, right? And you, you're not seeing you seeing you you're not seeing your your your, your brothers, your sisters, your mother, your father, your aunts, your uncles, uh, cousins, you know, first cousins, <laughs> you know, um, grandparents, right? Um, are being dragged out, beaten, thrown in jail, and so to escape the this. The families are your family is being broken apart, and and people are running out of town to escape the persecution. How would you feel if you couldn't see your family, you know, tomorrow? All because you, all because of let's 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 bring it into a context. Because the color of your skin, you can't see your family because you're being persecuted. How do you feel? How do you think they felt that they lost their family? The connection. Right. Okay. What you think, Alex? Torn. Okay. Would you be angry? Yes. You know, um, angry, upset confused because maybe you don't have places to go okay. um, leaving the one, one place you grew up in because you can't stay there because remember these men and women were Jews and so the place they knew which was Jerusalem and Israel they had to run from that yeah. all that they knew because they accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior Okay, because you see in the scripture in the third verse, it says they went to different places in Judea and Samaria. Okay, and so it was outside of uh, Judea was not a, was at that point was not a part of what was considered Israel, right? The, the conquered Israel, but it, it so they were leaving their place of where they lived. Okay. Sure. All right. So Acts chapter verses five through nine. So I want to read us through that. And Mr. Jarrett, good to have you here, sir. What's up, Jarrett? What's up, y'all? It's good to be here. How y'all doing? Oh, good, good, man. Good. Absolutely, yeah. it's good to hear. Yeah, uh, uh, I can read Acts. That's cool. Take us through. Uh, uh, five. <laughs> This is the Children's International version that I'm, I've posted. So if you have another version, you can read that too. It's up to you. Uh, uh, five through nine? Yep. All right. <clears throat> Philip uh, went to the city of Samaria and preached about the Christ. The people there heard Philip and saw the miracles he was doing carefully. Uh, he was doing. They all listened carefully to the things he said. Many of these people had evil spirits in them, but Philip made the evil spirits leave them. The spirits made a loud noise when they came out. Uh, there were also many weak and crippled people there. Philip, Philip healed them too. So that the people in that city, we, city were very happy. But there was a man named Simon in that city before Philip came there. Simon had practiced magic. He amazed all the people of Samaria with his magic. He bragged and called himself a great man. So Philip is one of the people, is one of the many Christians who left Jerusalem to escape the persecution, goes to the city of Samaria. And I don't do you do you remember um, what is important about the city of Samaria? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Um, if you remember, we talked about it because uh, um, in, in, in Acts, because Samaria always comes up. Samaria is the that uh, is not um, Jewish. It's not a Jewish city. It's uh, a city where you had those who were um, part Jewish or somehow connected to it, but then they were not considered a part of the nation of Jer Jer uh, Jerusalem, and, and so. 
they were the Jewish people actually discriminated against them that, you know, um, um, the scripture, I think you have heard the story of the Good Samaritan, the one who went and, and, and took care of the uh, Jewish man who was wounded on the road, beat up on the road and left for dead. Yeah. Um, well, the, the, the reason why that, that story is so significant is because Samaria was really considered um, um, a heathen city or town by the Jewish people. And here a heathen man helped a Jewish man who was beat up on the road, but, but two, two other Jewish people walked around their own brother um, and left him on the road. Okay, and so that's the significance to show that um, the Jewish people had an issue um, about themselves and about their righteousness and their self-righteousness. Um, but yet uh, salvation from a Jewish perspective, right? In Old Testament, um, so salvation and God was just for the Jewish people. It wasn't for the rest of the world. But when Christ came, he changed that or he fulfilled the prophecy that was in the Old Testament that salvation was for everyone, including the, Jew, the Gentiles or Samaria. So here Philip is going to Samaria, a city that the Jewish people would not go to, right? The, a city that they feel that um, they are going, they are not going to receive salvation and blessings from God because God is only gonna bless the Jewish people and he preaches Christ. And when he preaches Christ, he's doing miracles in the midst of a Gentile nation, right? And he's casting evil spirits out of the people in a Gentile nation, right? Again, right? For centuries, they did not deserve the blessings. They would not get the blessings. But here he is preaching Christ and they're being the miracles are being performed in their midst. Evil spirits are being cast out of people. Uh, and he's healing people who are weak and crippled. So God is actually manifesting himself. This is the first time that we see, um, uh, well, not the first time, but the first time since Christ has, um, has died and, and resurrected and gone to heaven that we see the, him manifesting himself in a Gentile city amongst Gentile people. And so it's significant. It's saying now this is this is this is a, a, a one of the confirmation that the gospel is is has been um, the gospel of Jesus Christ is and salvation is not just for the Jewish people, but it's for all people who are willing to hear the gospel, receive the gospel, and believe the gospel. Okay. So that's the significance of this scripture. But then at the ninth scripture is key because it brings talks about Simon, uh, Simon who practiced magic. Simon was basically a wizard or a sorcerer, right? Um, and he basically used, uh, which is uh, akin to witchcraft, right? In other words, he used his 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 power did not come from God; it came from other means, and he used that to. Uh, it says amaze all the people in Samaria. And he, you know, he bragged and called himself a great man because of that. Okay, so here we are, we've got Philip who's sharing the gospel. He's, he's doing all these miracles as he's sharing the gospel. And then we have a man who's no, already well known in the city to have great power and calls himself a great man. So do you see where these two can, potentially become into conflict? And that's a question. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what happens, right? So verse 10 through 13, somebody want to walk us through that? One? Yeah, I got you. <clears throat> All the people, the least important and the most important, paid attention to what Simon said. They said, this man has the power of God called the great power. Simon had amazed them with his magic tricks so long that the people, came, the people became his followers. But Philip told them the good news about the kingdom of God and the power of Jesus Christ. 
men and women believe a little bit and were baptized. Mm -hmm. Simon himself believed and was baptized. He stayed very close to Philip when he saw the miracles and the very powerful things that Philip did. Simon was amazed. Okay, so was there a conflict? Was Not he really. a huh? Not really. Not really. Okay. But but again, right? It was the good news. He believed and he was baptized. Now, when we say baptiz when we say baptized, um, let me make clear we're talking about water baptism here, right? When we're talking about baptism, just like we do, like um, um, Baptist churches do, they were baptized, immersed in water. They believed, they acknowledged it, and then they were baptized in the water. Okay. So let's go with the next. Some uh, somebody read fourteen and eighteen. I got you. Oh, okay. Oh, you got it. Yeah, I got it. Um, the apostles were still in Jerusalem. They heard, they heard that the people of Samaria had accepted the word of God, so they sent Peter and John to them. When Peter and John arrived, they prayed that the Samaritan believers might receive the Holy Spirit. These people had been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, but the Holy Spirit had not yet entered any of them. Then, when the two apostles began laying their heads on the people, they were laying their hands, sorry, on the people they received to the, they received the Holy Spirit. Simon saw that the Spirit was given to people when the apostles laid their hands on them. So he offered the apostles money. So here in the scriptures, right, the good news, the great work that Philip did, right, it got back to the apostles who were still in Jerusalem. In the, so so the apostles are staying in Jerusalem, even though there's a persecution going on in Jerusalem, okay? But they hear that the people in Samaria has accepted the word of God. So out of the apostles, they say, okay, we're gonna send Peter and John. Now remember, uh, Peter is the guy uh, who walked on water. Peter was the guy who cut the guy's ear off when they came for Jesus, okay? So uh, we got, Peter's the roughneck, right? He, he's the guy that, he's the guy you want to take with you. You know, they said, don't bring a, but don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Peter's the guy you want to bring to a gunfight because Peter probably packing it anyway, right? So they come and they're talking about, all right, they're baptizing in the name of the Lord, water baptism. But now they start talking and teaching them about um, being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the apostles come, they lay hands on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. So when they receive the Holy Spirit, what do you think was the evidence of them receiving the Holy Spirit? Because it says in 18, Simon saw that the Spirit was given to people when the apostle laid their hands on them. When you see, have, what was, and, and, and come from your own experience, when you see somebody who's, who's received the Holy Spirit, what have you seen? They fall out. Okay, they fall out. What else? Anything else? Maybe screaming. Screaming? Talking, speaking in tongues. Oh, okay, here we go. Speaking in tongues, okay, right? And, you know, those are two of the things that happen, right? You know, we remember we had the class on the Holy Spirit, you know, some, you know, pass out, um, speaking in tongues, um, prophesying, you know, there, there's an unusual response when the indwelling of the Holy Spirit comes. What's the problem in verse 18, though? What did Simon do in response to seeing this? Offered the money. Right, okay. So why do you think he's offering the money? I don't know, I'm confused. Why, what, why are you confused? Why would he offer the money? Okay. 
But think about what was he before he accepted Christ? What was he doing? What did he have? What did he give up? Oh, no, I'm drawing a blank. In the previous scripture, what was he? Do? What did he do? Remember, they called him. They said that this man has the power of God, called the great power. But then he heard the gospel and believed and got baptized. So, what did he give up to accept Christ? His great power. Well, yes, right? Because it, it was magic power, right? Witchcraft that had nothing to do with God, but now you were accepting Jesus Christ. So he had to walk away from that. He had to let that go, right? Yeah. Can you, can, can, can you, can you accept Christ and still serve Satan? I don't know. That's, that's, I don't. You say no. You still serve Satan? Yes. Like, no. Not intentionally, but can you still wind up doing things that serve Satan, even though yeah. you're. Huh? Yeah. Okay. That's why I was like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I mean, you still definitely do, you know, sinful right. stuff. So what you see here is Simon is slipping back to old behaviors, right? Mm -hmm. Let's look at verse 19 through 23. Come on, walk us through that one. Yeah, I got it. He said, give me also this power so that when I lay my hands on a person, he will receive the Holy Spirit. Peter said to him, you and your money should both be destroyed. You thought you could buy God's gift with money. You cannot share with us in this work. Your heart is not right before God. Change your heart. Turn away from this evil thing you have done. Pray to the Lord. Maybe he will forgive you for thinking this. I see that you are full of bitter jealousy and ruled by sin. So, harsh a harsh response and so what so I, i'm going to take it one verse at a time right he said give me also this power so that when i lay hands on a person he will receive the holy spirit so the first thing i want to say to you is this what is wrong with that response uh he didn't really earn the power he, he felt entitled to the power okay I will give you that, right? Because he's given, he, he wants to offer them money, right? But what else, right? Um, he, he wanted to do it, right? Give me this, also this power so I can lay hands and he, and on a person and he will receive the Holy Spirit. What's wrong with the process? His process. He didn't earn it. He didn't earn it, but what is he what is his what is his, his what is his intention on using it he said give me this power so i can lay hands on a person and he will receive the holy spirit what's his intention behind that he wants the power so that he can do what give people the holy spirit right what's the requirement to receive the holy spirit What did Philip do that 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 we, that that um, the apostles decide to send Peter and John? What happened in Samaria when Pete, when Philip came, uh, came there and preached the gospel? The people believed, right, and got baptized. True. So they, they believed in Jesus Christ. That's a requirement to receive the Holy Spirit. You cannot receive the Holy Spirit if you do not already believe. 
But if you look at Simon's process, he just wants to be able to lay hands on somebody so they can receive the Holy Spirit. That's his old nature of being able to demonstrate that he has power so that he could look a certain way to people versus I want that power so that I can help spread the gospel and change people's lives. His request was about him and not about God. And so don't we sometimes feel, find ourselves in that, that place? You know, we accept Christ, we believe in God, we wanna live our life, but sometimes we have a tendency of going into our, back to our old ways. Haven't you found yourself doing that? Haven't you seen other people do that? Absolutely. And so the question I have here is this, is that um, what is the reward for falling back into your old ways? And Peter kind of outline, out, outlines all that. Um, and in, this, in these scriptures here from verses 20 through 22, Peter talks about the penalty and why the penalty right? You know, in 20, he's saying, you, sh you and your money should be destroyed. This is the penalty for, and, and the reason why is because of his arrogance, that he thought he could buy God. He could buy God's gift, the gift that God has already given. You could buy it with money. Arrogance, selfishness. But then in 21, it, it says also too, which is even worse, says you can't share with us in this work. You can't share in the work that God is calling everybody to. And he says the reason why your heart is not right before God. Have you ever felt in, this, in any time in your life that you felt that you, you just weren't right with God? that you didn't yeah. deserve to be in his presence or to go to God? Mm -hmm. Done that horrible thing or, you know, haven't lived our lives and we just, we know we're not right with God. Uh, it, but the thing that I love about verse 22, is that just like God, Peter comes back, because remember now, Peter's rough, right? But, but Peter, you know, and Peter's rough for a lot of reasons because Peter also was, was in this same situation with Christ. Peter who walked on the water, Peter who cut the ear off, Peter who, who said, I'll, you know, I'll die with you, you know? But Peter was, with, with everything and his passion for Christ, Peter can come back and say all this because Peter has gone down this road several times. Peter walked on water. And then the next thing you know, he was telling um, uh, after and he walked on water and he also said that Jesus Christ was the Christ. And, and Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but such as, uh, my father in heaven. That's like big endorsement. But then in the next breath, when Jesus talked about that he was gonna die, Peter said, oh, no, we ain't gonna let that happen. And Jesus turned around to him and said, call him, you know, um, get back Satan. <laughs> he went from being, having things revealed to him from God to be working on behalf of Satan. In just a few scriptures, he went and talked about how he was going to die for Christ, because if he's going to die, I'm going to die with you. And then turned around and denied Christ three times. And each and every time Jesus Christ gave him a way back and he came back. And so Peter does the same thing here. It says, change your heart, turn away from this evil thing you have done. Pray to the Lord. And he says, maybe he will forgive you for thinking this. 
So it's not even about the things we do, it's also about the things we think. And then he even goes back in the 23rd verse to point out um, where the source of this is coming from. And he says, I see that you are full of bitter jealousy and ruled by sin. So Simon's reaction was because he was jealous because he was the guy that had the power. Now these guys come in and they, they basically trump him. And so he was jealous and thought that if I give him some money, they'll let me have what they got. But that was originated from his sin. So, and I say that to say here is that this, this uh, as we see Simon going through this journey, Peter went through this journey and so he's really teaching Simon a lesson on what it really means to serve God and that you're going to fall, but you need to always be in a place that once you fall, that you go back and ask for forgiveness and understand where it's coming from so that you don't sin again. And so that's the challenge that is to us, right? Every day we, we awake. Um, and we start on our day, we're going to be faced with uh, temptation. We're going to be faced with the emotions that we deal with uh, through work and people we engage in. And we may get to a point to where we do some things that we know that are not in line with what God wants us to do. The question is, is that what can we do to, to be on the lookout for those type of things so that we don't displease God and continue to please God with the way we live our lives? I might read 24 and 25 because this was his response. Are you going to get it? Alex. I got it. Um, Simon answered, both of you pray for me to the Lord. Pray that the things you have said will not happen to me. Then the two apostles told the people the things they have seen Jesus do. And after the apostles had given the message of the Lord, they went back to Jerusalem. On the way, they went through many Samaritan towns and preached the good news to the people. So this here is actually the beginning um, soon to be the beginning of the ministry going out to the Gentiles, going out to the rest of the, uh, the known world, um, which you will begin to see in some of the other scriptures. But, you know, as a prelude, I will say is this, is that we, and, and you know, if, if, you, if you remember your Bible stories, we know that Saul is actually going to be the one who's going to be the main one leading the, the charge to taking the gospel to the Gentiles. Um, but it's ironic in this story, Saul is used to begin getting the gospel to leave Jerusalem and to go out to the Gentiles. He, he's the cause of it as Saul, and he becomes the, the, the chief apostle to the Gentiles when he has his, um, uh, his conversion and salvation. And so it's interesting how God has used Saul here in, in his former role to begin setting up the ministry that he's going, going to have once he receives salvation. So the question I have to you is this, is that can you see parallels of this in, 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 in your lives today? Have you seen where um, persecution or even um, things happen in, in life that forced you um, to make a shift and a change? And because of that, um, it put you into a better place or it put you into an open door or it got you to encounter people you normally wouldn't have been able to encounter and you were able to impact their life in a positive way um, because of, of your Christian faith. Yeah. 
I think like uh, I know for me, just um, like changing my perspective and like really changing my heart before going into certain things. You know, you have times where your heart's not in the right place. And I think like kind of what Peter was saying, Simon, like you know, like like basically like get your mind right kind of thing before you you know you come you come this way like you came you came out of the wrong way you know um and so like simon's response here basically you know saying like pray for me you know and then also just pray that the things that you know you said will won't happen to me you know like i'm i understand that i was wrong like i'm gonna get right kind of situation so um definitely have like a lot of different instances like the I mean, yeah, but like, you know, relationship, like friendship type of stuff, uh, you know, work environment, you know, like, I think it, it's pretty, like, I think everybody can probably find a parallel to this, like, in every different facet of their life. Alex, you got anything to add to that or Jared? I agree yeah same same here okay and and i think in um when we look at today the challenges that um uh you face as young, young people um you know uh on and and it, and i look at the scripture and it's very interesting because um as young people you're expected to um you know lead the way now right because you're young adults, right? You know, you're working, you're doing the things and you're trying to be successful and you have an older generation um, that um, sometimes doesn't give you necessarily the respect you think you should have, right? And then there are those who are cheering in your corner. Um, that's just people. But um, at the end of the day, right, um, young adults, you, you, you are primarily the ones who are bringing disruption and changes to our culture, to our society, because you're the ones coming up with the new ideas. You're the ones that are embracing new ideas or, uh, and, and you're the ones who quite frankly are like, for instance, having more impact on voting because more of you are voting, more of you are having a, a, a speaking out. And so you're bringing disruption and so my question is, is that as you're bringing disruptions because you're bringing different thoughts and mindsets, you know, like we said two years ago, who would have thought that the bulk of the workforce would be doing, would be working remote? Who would have thought that people would be resigning from their jobs because they just don't like their jobs and, and they're gonna go find something else, you know? Um, who would have thought that, um, you know, we are just beginning to see people for the first time and discover that our culture is changing because we, you know, quite frankly, some people are comfortable like, yeah, if I never see you um, other than on a screen, I'm good, okay? And so, and these are things that are being embraced by different, but it's really your generation as young adults that are now setting the tone for our culture and for our faith. And so, my question to you is this, what are some of the disruptions you think you see outside of the you know, pandemic, but what are some of the disruptions you see, have seen that either are happening, have happened, or you think you'll see is, are coming down the way that could potentially impact uh, the church? Or, or, or let me say in a broader sense, that can impact Christians, okay? And that we may be placed in a similar, similar situation as the, we, we saw in the scriptures today. I know it's like a comprehensive question, but just your thought. Because whatever it is, it's probably gonna be your generation that's gonna to have to leave it. Deep thoughts, huh? Deep thoughts. 
genuinely don't know. And it's, it's a question that I think you, you really need to consider because, um, and the reason why I say that is because think about it, you know, businesses, um, um, how churches are, or churches are starting to come back, but churches aren't completely coming back. Um, what you find is valuable, right? Um, from a faith perspective, right? You, you know, let, let, let's call it for what it is. As young people, you listen to certain people when it comes to uh, trying to learn your faith and understand your faith. Why is that? What are they saying that's crucial and important? Um, because by, by, you, by you doing that, you're shaping how the church today is actually going to minister to you, right? And what are those critical things, right? Yes, you want to learn about God. You want to be able to serve God and learn about. But um, like I said, with these, with these scriptures here, we're talking about disruption, disruption to lifestyle, disruption on how we look at things. Um, are you saying that you'd rather be more traditional? No change? No, I think it just depends. I really, truly think it just depends on, like, the person. Because everybody is different. Like, I genuinely like listening to Stephen Furry and various Daniels. But they're, like, they make you feel like you're, like, it, it, they make you feel like you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And it's not uh like they teach but mm -hmm. it's not like i'm in school you know like it, it's uh let me not say it like that it's not like oh like if you if the teacher's like david you, you read this portion and then we talk about it you know right like whereas like i think a lot of like a lot of traditional pastors go like not obviously where they're asking people in the congregation but y'all read as a congregation together and then they kind of like give you a synopsis but it's a lot of like it's not like I don't know to me it's not like the conversation yeah like it's like you're having yeah. a conversation at the barbershop yeah, there we go yeah yeah like and Stephen, I mean to me Stephen Furtick and Darius Daniels hit the nail on the head like every time I listen to either one of them you know like perfect you know, like it's, I receive it, like I receive it and I'm able to take notes on it to the point where I can actively apply it throughout my like week, you know, whereas like, I know, like, like me, me and my girl talk about it all the time where like, she likes TD Jakes. I like TD Jakes too, but like, I genuinely prefer the other two over him, but she likes TD Jakes because of the she feels like she's actually in the church atmosphere, you know, when she listens to TJ. Mm -hmm. You know, so like that's what, like literally, that's that's her reasoning for listening to TJ. You know, so like I said, I think it just differs on the person. Like, and I and think that, that's where it could get tricky, like in terms of you saying, like, well, you know, like, what is it? And it's like, I don't know if it's like a what is it? I mean, I guess technically it is a what is it, but it's going to differ probably, you know, by each person, just like with anything. And I agree with you on that, right? Because um, you can receive from Frederick and uh, Darius uh, Daniels. She can receive from T.D. Jakes. It doesn't take away from the message, but, the, the, but to your point, um, you know, what if you couldn't hear from them? Does, does that mean you stop hearing? And, and I'll tell you this, I know some people feel, I don't know, well, not about Darius Daniels, but some, some people feel that Frederick doesn't have, doesn't teach any theology. That he's yeah, just, no, no, yeah, yeah. I, I'm about to, I've heard that a too. motivational speaker. You know, yeah, which I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I, I you know, I, I, I like, I actually like 
I think he just has a different style of of the presentation of the Bible. But I think that's the thing. Like you hit the nail on the head, right? Like so for me, I know like theology. I I don't mind learning some theology, but I'll be completely transparent. If I can't see a parallel within the theology, you know, like I didn't go to seminary school, so and I don't have any intentions on doing that. So I think like some people like that though. Some people really love it, you know. Versus like, not, I'm not gonna say I don't I care less, but it's like I I really genuinely love to like go listen, you know, receive it, receive the word, and then be able to apply it. Whereas I think with theology, sometimes like I can do that, right? Like, you know, going to a traditionally Baptist church, you're gonna hear theology, um, you know. So like, there's still ways you can do that, but I just prefer, you know. That's why I said I, like it's gonna differ regardless like it's a preference thing for anybody exactly you know like it's a preference thing unless you don't have a mind of your own or been conditioned to go to one place all your life it's always going to be preference even if you go to one oh, place for sure for even sure. if you go to one place all your life because that's what you prefer for sure you know but at the end of the day um we need to learn about the, the scriptures. And, and so um, I think that we, we've kind of come to the end of the lesson, but I think the key thing that I want y'all to take away, um, if anything I want you to take away from this is that um, there's a blessing in your disruption, right? Um, where the church was disrupted, blessings came out of it. It's like the the mother eagle kick, kicking the, e the, the baby eagle out of the nest. You can't fly, you, if, if you, you, can't, you can't grow and spread your wings if you stay in the nest. And, um, and that's what the scripture's uh, really highlighting, the fact that, um, yes, Stephen died, Saul was per persecuting the church, but by persecuting the church, they spread out, the gospel got spread and it started going out beyond um, Jerusalem and going to the Gentile, the Gentiles um, that, that were outside of the Jewish family, the nation. And so the gospel was starting to be preached and beginning and, and doing the beginnings of being preached to the world. And so um, my encouragement to you is to kind of look at these scriptures and see where you see yourself within the scriptures in your life today and find the answers that you're trying to figure out for the next step. But understand the next step always has to include Christ because he is a, a lamp to your, uh, it, uh, a lamp to your feet, a light to your path because God continues to order our footsteps. Any questions on what we reviewed today, tonight? If not, um, Mr. Jarrett? Yes, sir. You wanna close this out in prayer, sir? Uh, sure thing. Thank you. Uh, everybody, I'll go ahead and bow your heads and close your eyes for a moment. Let's uh, give reverence to God. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to meet and study your word and um, understand the text to uh, apply the lessons learned or the lessons that are presented to apply those things to our lives and uh, so that we may serve you better in your kingdom, Lord God. Uh, thank you for um, allowing us to just be and come together and uh, we pray that we continue to, to do this and uh, uh, bring in others that may be in search of uh, community. Uh, in your name we pray, Lord God. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you for your time. Uh, and uh, we will uh, reconvene again next week. Um, we'll continue to go. We'll finish up the eighth chapter and then start getting into the ninth chapter of Acts. Uh, so if you want to read the rest of the eighth chapter in preparation, 
um, because we'll probably we'll be talking, that's the eunuch. So we'll be talking more about, a little bit more about baptism. And, you know, if you want, we can dig a little bit more into what really baptism truly means. And um, to us as Christians, you know, is it a requirement? What did you think? So, all right. So, folks, y'all have a good one. Um, we'll talk with you 